welcome to GM Talks. Today we're going to look at chess openings, uh, specifically the King's Indian for black. I will give you some tips, good advice uh, on how to build your King's Indian repertoire with black, especially sidestepping some of the heavy theory. So this is an easy how to get an attacking position with black. Uh, are you ready? Then let's get into it. I played uh, in the Danish Rapid Championship and the Danish Blitz Championship this weekend. Uh, one on, on Saturday, the other one on Sunday. And I was number two in one of them and three in, in the other one. So not really a big success. I wanted to win. That's why, why I was there. But okay, you can't always win. But I played some interesting games. I decided to play as sharp as possible because to keep myself sort of fresh and have some interesting games. Uh, that's what's... What's, uh, what's this is about. So let's jump into it. In the first game, we're gonna look at I'm uh, black against uh, Jeppe Hel Falkesgaard. Uh, and uh, as some of you probably remember, I played a draw with him in the Kronborg Chess Open. So I was eager to beat him. And this was the last round, important game uh, to secure the second place. Uh, I'm black. I've, I think this G6 is probably the most precise move order if you want to play the King's Indian. Um, and we went for this. In, in a later game, he didn't play d4, he played uh, d3 instead uh, in, in the Blitz. And also won that game. So I got my revenge on Jeppe. Uh, anyway, this is the main line and he plays h3, which is, I think, known as the Markogonov variation or something like that. It's quite popular. It's Definitely one of the serious options for white. Uh, A3 has many uh, things. First of all, this square is often a problem for white in the King's Indian. Second, you don't have any bishop g4, knight g4, and uh, you are, might be preparing this one, uh, or you just uh, keep sort of your options open. Uh, anyway, A3 is, is often uh, an, an interesting move, and, and white is, is very flexible, can castle queenside or kingside and so on. And here comes a little trick, knight bd7. Notice I don't castle. Uh, normal move is to castle and uh, that is, is of course the main line and maybe the best move, but I'm trying to change the move order a little bit to get them out of the book and make them think for themselves and let's get a fully blitz game where I'm not playing against what they prepared at home, but I'm playing against the actual Persian, uh, just with a sharp dynamic King's Indian, which is probably not to everybody's liking. Uh, Bishop e3 is also natural, e5, and if he moves the knight, I will take, because then a3 is not uh, really what you want with, with, the, with the take on d4, because you usually have to cover up with this, and will leave all these black squares weak. D5 is the natural move, and here comes the trick, knight c5. So normally, if I had castled, uh, white would have played knight f3, so he would have been able to answer knight c5 with knight d2. That's what he really wants to do. In, in this position, the, the main line is queen c2, but it's not really what white wants to, to, to do, play the, place the queen on c2. Uh, especially some of the, the sharper lines, you need the, the queen on this uh, diagonal to uh, prevent something with knight a5 and so on. So this is sort of messing up with his system and he was starting to think here. So this is a little trick. You just wait with the castle and, uh, and start threatening this pawn immediately. That's one of my uh, move order tricks to play the King's Indian without knowing any theory, <laughs> to be honest. So he plays f3. I think that's uh, what you want to do. Uh, and you see in, in the same-ish variation, knight is wrong here. But I do get to get uh, this in here and suddenly we see that there is a hole here. Knight e2. And here uh, I think the best move is probably f5. Um, just uh, He can play b4, but if he's going to castle queenside, b4 may not be 
the, the dream move and uh, and he does have some problems on the, the king side. Anyway, I played a5. I like to keep my knight here. Uh, it, the problem is with a5 is it's a little bit slow. The knight is, is a little bit... Uh, it's not that well placed here with the pawn on f3, to be honest. Uh, it, it would be better to have it here where it can also go to this square and so on. Uh, and it might be kicked later with a3 and b3. Queen d2. And queen h4, I'm still trying to just confuse him, um, and, and queen e7. So that was the idea. This is also known from the series variation. I'm uh, making his, um, his control over e7. If he now no goes here, I got this move for free. Uh, and I'll play, play f5 here. Uh, and I, the queen is better placed on, on e7 than it is on d8. Uh, okay, uh, but he went all in with e4. That's tough. Okay, uh, kicking the knight. I'm not going back because if I go back, uh, then he's, he's definitely better. So let's uh, sacrifice a pawn. And that's important when you play the King's Indian. You have to have a dynamic mindset. You have to go in there and say, okay, we are playing for three results. Uh, let's slug it out, right? Uh, and take and he takes and um, I take back and queen takes and a4 uh, h5 is also interesting uh, the thing is um, he's he's moved a lot of pawns uh, he's got one extra pawn now but I will get some counter play for sure and this guy is really uh, awoken um, and, and I think this is, is unpleasant, especially in rabbit chess. This is very difficult to play for white. Okay, queen d2 going back. a3 and b4. That's actually a mistake. And I had a feeling that was a mistake because uh, this looks... But on the other hand, uh, maybe queen d2 was a mistake. Maybe you should, should try to, to play something knight b5 and, and, and take on c5 and something like that. To, to, I'm not sure. I, I think I should be, be better. Anyway, b4. And here I have this little nasty move. Uh, hitting queen, hitting the, knight, the pawn and the knight. And x-raying the rook down here, right? So a lot of, of, of trouble in paradise and he castle and here I have a very good move. I didn't do that. I took an f3. That's a mistake. Uh, it looks natural. Uh, keeping on the attack here, attacking the rook and, um, and getting a pawn back and so on. But the, the good move here is this move and uh, that's actually very, very, very unpleasant for him. And, and, and black is, is clearly better after this move. And I don't know why I didn't play it. Um, that was that was stupid. Uh, I think um, I think he has to go e5 or something, and, uh, and because he has a rook e1, and I go here, and and this is is obviously uh, uh, very unpleasant for, for White, who's just moved too many pawns. Anyway, uh, I didn't do that. I took this pawn, and um, oops, oops, it was here. Yes. Uh, be, queen f3, yes. So and uh, and that was a mistake. And he plays bishop d4. Good move. Just ready. There are some some troubles here, and I can get this one, but ah, it's all hanging. So and I took here, and I should have I should have have played knight b3. It says an a2, and that would have been interesting uh, with more or less an equal position. After this move and this move, threatening the rook. I'm actually um, at bishop e2 and queen f4, and here he can go queen d2, and and he's actually better in the ending because I have a uh, he has more space and and the attack is gone if he goes queen d2. I can understand why I didn't go queen d2, but I, I don't know why I didn't see it really. But he played uh, king b1, um, and I played knight a4, uh, which is is really uh, natural. Um, and rook f he won and here he, of course it, it was a rabbit game so uh, he's he loses a pawn which is is also quite natural so here i'm just clearly better now with the pawn more and attack and this is what you can often get in in in, in the king's indian when white messes up um the computer does not like that move i think it wanted to go to e3 um 
and bishop d7 there's this bishop also a bit okay let's take it a little fast here and i couldn't find out where to put the queen so i ended up going here at least eyeing this one and also eyeing this square down here um rook e2 bishop a4 and the computer does not like that move it likes rook e8 and rook e7 and of course that would have been clearly better i was i was sort of eager to get this king out in the open i got this uh this a3 pawn making his and his he's moving all his pawns so in a, in a rabbit game you really want to uh, to and and that was a mistake too and here i should just take here there's no attack and uh and if i just take that one i'm i'm up with two pawns and his king is bad and i will easily i'll play rook e8 or something next and i will easily uh, have a clearly better position Anyway, uh, I played c6, uh, natural move. I think uh, just with the following the principle of opening up the position, and um, and he attacks this one and defends this one, so that was a good move. And I just kept on the the idea of of trying to, but maybe rook d8 had been better. And um, and here, of course, the the thing is. Uh, after something I did, I'd probably go rook a7 and say, okay, you got a bad king. It will never survive the time scrabble, this, uh, this, this king here. Uh, maybe a computer can get away with it, for, but for humans, it's just horrible to have a bad king in these kind of to totally open positions. Uh, so I was, I was, to be honest, I was not really worried about not winning. And he played this move, and I haven't seen that at all, but it doesn't work, uh, which takes no time to, because I have this check and um, this one and here i have another check getting the rook away from a8 he yeah, he was trading this here and after this move um i just take back and after this uh, we sacrifice and he he gave up so that was an interesting typical king's indian uh, rabbit game let's see another one where i also managed to confuse my opponent with the uh, oops there was not going to add to mana, mana. we're going to just gonna um, get a new new game here um, and here i am black against uh, my good teammate from uh, hillerud jens Östergaard, who uh, just played in uh, he played in european uh, chess cup well not just played played last year and won against two grandmasters and he had a very good season so he's pretty good he made an iron mom he's not bad but i know that the, you can shake him somehow so i'm black in the king's indian and um, again we do this trick okay i'll just uh, do like this um, so i play this move uh, before a castle uh, to confuse him Basically, just to confuse him. Uh, he can play e5, um, and that's uh, interesting. Uh, I have to take a knight e4 and e6 and take a knight e5. And, I, and it's it's a mess. Uh, I think black is okay, but it's it's not that pleasant. I think e5 is, is probably the best move for white. Uh, but most of the white players will not play e5. They will play bishop e2 here. And uh, we'll just transpose uh, to classical where I play knight d7. But I also managed to avoid the exchange variation. Not that Jens would ever play the exchange variation, um, but anyway. So here White has uh, basically two options. Uh, rook e1 is one uh, interesting move, and which he played, and the other main line is bishop e3, um, which we will probably get back to in another game. Um, I play rook e8, it's a very weird uh, line. Um, looks strange. The idea is after this, uh, I go here. Uh, maybe jumping in here and after this move I play this weird move which uh, discourage uh, c5 uh, and get ready for this one and f5 uh, and I had pretty decent results in blitz with this uh, stuff uh, learned it from Cotronius uh, Rugi won uh, the other main line and here is uh, the special line h6 the thing is, these positions are very difficult to play. They are very difficult to play for, for both sides. And if people don't have all these automatic moves they know from theory, then they will mess up and make mistakes. Uh, and I uh, hope that, of course, my opponent will make more mistakes because I'm a little bit... I looked at this. I'm, I'm more familiar, uh, f 
famili- familiar with this uh, setup. The, the main move is 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 to to take and play rook e8 and c6 and something with knight e4 and long lines and it's probably fine. Right, h6 is is uh, confusing. Bishop f1 is the natural move. You could also um, play something else. And uh, here comes the move knight h7. So I'm going back. Uh, I'm covering this pawn. Um, I'm also preparing this move, and on, on this move, I have this one immediately, uh, which is, is uh, every King's Indian player's dream, uh, getting f5 in uh, with and, and all the pieces on the king side and so on, and that's that's probably unplayable for white. So, bishop f1, knight a7, and, and Jens was looking woo, very confused, and what to do here, and uh, am I going to play f5, or, or what am I going to do? Okay, and he decided to, to play g3, which is not the best move, but uh, it does uh, get ready for this move, and, and he, he wants, and if I go with something with f5, it's, it's a nice move to have, because knight h4 is suddenly possible, and these squares will be weak, but I'm not going to play f5 now, when he played g3, I'm going to take, and switch to dynamics. Um, anyway, we need this light to get out here. Okay, um, and he takes a knight e5, and already it's a, it's a mess. I'm threatening this move, uh, and, and, and there's a check here, and it's not that easy, right? So f4 is not possible, bishop takes uh, f4, h4 is not really what you want to play. Um, so uh, he played bishop d2, and here comes the other knight, and now we see that, oh no, there's a lot of trouble here. Uh, and, and actually, white is probably okay in this position, uh, but with uh, not much, so much time and feeling the pressure and, and so on, uh, with all the dynamics uh, in the position, you can also go here uh, and so on, it's not that easy. And uh, to be honest, Jens, he panics. Here he should play Rook F1. That's a very difficult move to play. The, the idea is basically to be able to play f3 on bishop g4. Uh, just to sit tight and I think white is okay. Um, if I take on c4, he will get uh, compensation for sure. So, uh, so he took here uh, and that was uh, that's always a positional... Uh, risky decision, uh, getting losing the black red bishop. This guy can be really strong now. I take back rook c1, also a mistake account, and and it wants me to take here. But I'm I'm not gonna do anything to the position now because after d4, I had it, the computer says okay, knight takes c4 is so strong. But here I, he has a bad bishop. I have an excellent bishop. I have strong dark squares. I have excellent uh, dynamic possibilities. I'm not gonna change anything uh, in a position like that. I'm just going to sit on it and find something, uh, a way to, to make the advantage grow, because White's position is not with that many prospects. So knight d5 uh, doesn't make much sense, but I don't know what he's co so supposed to play. c6 uh, and knight f6. There are some things here, there are some things here, and uh, and also uh, getting ready to, to get the rooks connected, which you always want in this. B4 is, uh, is a little bit weird. Rook E8, um, and I'm basically having a very uh, nice time here uh, getting to the side. I don't know how he should develop. He always has to be worried about knight f3 check, uh, c5 sometimes, um, maybe bishop h6, uh, Knight d7, a5, there's a lot of stuff, and he uh, messes up completely with c5, um, trying to get some counterplay, and after this move, it's basically over. Uh, it, this, this pin is really, really unpleasant, and you see these knights makes a, a horrible impression. Uh, it goes back, take, take, and bcb6 just developing. He can't move, really. Um, if you go here, I can I can probably, I may, might even try and trap the queen with bcb6 and bishop c4. His, his position is, 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 is a total mess. Uh, rook b1, uh, rook d7, I'm just piling up all good pieces, whites all bad pieces, bad structure, uh, and rook before b6, and here he resigned. Uh, the, the pin is basically, this is just uh, curtains, um, 
and I don't know what to do. Uh, he will lose the exchange no matter what, and he will not get any compensation because his pieces are disoriented. So that was a pretty easy win for black in the King's Indian. Um, that's what you want, we all want, right? Okay, let's see the last game. Um, I was not, uh, oops, I was not, I was not really happy about uh, the the tournament, uh, especially on the, the the next one is a blitz game, and I didn't, I played better in in, in the, the 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 rapid. The blitz was, ah, it was not really uh, impressive. Um, Yeah, and we'll switch it over. And here I'm back against uh, Ellen Freire and Nielsen, who's probably the best Danish. Uh, he, she won the Blitz for women and was Danish champion, and is probably the best Danish uh, uh, female chess player at the moment. Um, she did uh, decide not to play the Olympiad, which was a bit of a surprise and. I don't know really what, know why, but probably she has uh, she started studying and uh, and has busy with other plans. Uh, it anyway, it's it, the, she was kind of the big hope for for Danish women's chess, and um, seems like she also the development has not really gone her way recently. So uh, it's not not really getting better, but she's a. Pretty decent blitz player, which you will always so see. Okay, so I'm black again, and uh, I keep on with the King's Indian here. Um, and she goes G3. Uh, so this is the Fianchetto uh, variation. Um, and uh, I also played this against Tupo. And I have this uh, line I learned from uh, actually another woman. Uh, I saw her play this a lot. Uh, Harika Drovo Nelly or something from uh, India. Um, uh, the, Good grandmaster. Uh, she often plays uh, this way with bishop d7. The funny thing is, when you play bishop d7, um, uh, white always get confused. It's just they're just sitting there and thinking, what uh, what is this bishop d7? And it's it's actually an, a very established line. There's a uh, hundreds of games in, in from this position, and I played it, but it, it happens every time, uh, even against uh, 2600 players. There, they're just what and bishop d7. Um, uh, some some small moves. Uh, what you get a lot is is queen c2, and and, and that loses a pawn. White gets some compensation, but uh, it's not enough. Uh, white black should be slightly better. This happens a lot in blitz. That's one line. Uh, another line is, is is they don't see that the, the pawn is threatened, so they go here, and you can also take this pawn. Um, one of the idea is with how this is of course to connect the rooks, but sometimes you also want to do this this. And this, uh, aiming at this this square here, um, that's a very crude way of attacking. I'm not really sure it works, uh, but it's it's unpleasant, especially in blitz. It can be unpleasant. Uh, one move uh, you can get is this this one, but then this is a is, is a bit annoying because this pawn will become weak. Um, this, and, and this pawn, this knight is, is, is not well placed here. Um, also, uh, Tubo later in the tournament played this move, and after this, black is fine. Um, this they, it's a little bit early for this. Um, I played some with a5, but the computer thinks you should should play something with take and c5 and and open up the, the position here for this guy instead of what I did. Anyway, uh, she played bishop d5, which makes no sense because uh, I really want to play h6 no matter what. Uh, I like uh, to, this is, for instance, the main line here is rook b1 preparing uh, b3 or b4 and I go h6 uh, so so bishop d5 h6 is uh, it's not making much sense and here I got a5 for free and rook c1 and uh, the rook is not doing much here and there is the problem that often black's knight will go to this square uh, knight a7 is a mistake here I can actually win a pawn with d5 and and uh, and this one is hanging uh, so that was a clear mistake uh, g5 just wins a pawn uh, knight a7 is, is more elegant uh, I'm trying to to do some some things uh, there are these these squares here and here that you uh, might target um, b3 knight g5 uh, queen h2 
uh, queen and king h7 has decided to, to cover this one here. Um, h4, basically, uh, sometimes it's good for white to, to move the pawns forward, and other times it's not that good. It depends uh, on if, if, if there will be weaknesses here. The moment it looks fine, um, and h5 is probably a mistake. I should not be afraid of h5, to be honest. Uh, it's not really. So I think the best move here is actually knight f8. We have a very interesting uh, position. Um, I think black is, is, is fine, uh, no, no problem. But um, h5 is probably wrong because this square is, is, is weakened. And knight e5, and that's usually not a good move. Um, to, to put the knight here, uh, and I wanted to play c6 anyway. Um, this will make this pawn a little weak, but in general, and this was a mistake, it says it likes uh, something else, I don't remember and what it was. Um, I want to take on d4, yeah, you can also do that and play bishop d4 or something. Um, that's also possible. Uh, by the way, I like I like that it's it's, it's doing this, especially in blitz uh, and king d8. I'm not sure that makes any sense. Rook a d8. Um, she took here. I took back with the knight. And notice this one is not hanging because uh, the knight is hanging on c3. Bishop a6, uh, and I don't want to give her my bishop. And here he, she makes a, a, a mistake. Uh, she should go back. Uh, bishop a6 made no sense. I'll probably play something like this, but maybe knight a4 or something. It could be possible. I might have to play knight c5. But anyway, we'll have an interesting position. I'm, of course, hoping to land a knight there, there one day. Um, she played f4, and here, actually, this move is, is winning a pawn. Um, just... Uh, it's, it's kind of funny, uh, so that was a mistake. Um, if, if I go king h7, then f5, and, uh, and I can actually take. <laughs> and queen takes, um, and king takes h6. And the good thing about this line is that uh, this bishop is on the board, and it's the bad bishop. It can often be a bad bishop, and here especially bad with all the pawns on white in the center. So knight c5 was a thing, but it looks so nice to have this knight on this square. So, uh, and also bishop is coming here and so on. But f5 was a little bit unpleasant. So like Fischer said, to, to get squares, you have to give squares. And I got a little bit nervous and, um, and that was maybe not the best move. And, uh, but this is uh, definitely a mistake. She should, she should definitely play rook f1. Uh, this pawn, it looks like you're burying this guy, but it will get out. Uh, there's there's too much activity to to not uh, so so I'm 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 getting happy here and this was a, of course a huge uh, mistake uh, make no sense this move um, she had to take here and uh, would be interesting position it says something like this and uh, I don't know what to think of this um, anyway. Uh, knight 2 was a mistake, rook 88, uh, covering the pawn, it's covered, and I'm going to round this guy up with knight e6, uh, rook e6, and knight d7, and queen f4, rook e6, uh, and this is a typical uh, blitz blunder, just losing material, I take on, on d1, and uh, winning the exchange, and and this was even worse because she does attack my queen, but I attack her queen back and uh, keep my bishop. And of course, I want a piece. And and this this is going to get out, so we're just finished here. And so, okay, and yeah, um, and 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 white resigned. So that was uh, the King's Indian. Um, I did a decent uh, got decent result with the King's Indian. Also, I, from this tournament, we're going to look at the. Karakan. I did lose on, in Blitz against the Jonas in the Karakan, but I also won some some nice games, um, uh, interesting games with uh, dynamic possibilities for both sides. Anyway, this was uh, GM Talks. I hope you enjoyed this video, and please leave comments, share, and you know, sharing is caring, and uh, liking is I don't know what, but it's nice for me. Thank you for. <laughs>